Hey there boys and girls and welcome to episode 36 of Sonic Boom TV. Got a lot of stuff to go over, um, new things that I've picked up, um, and one little thing that I didn't really want to have to say, but uh, I'm going to say it anyway because, uh, you know, try to keep this place a nice place to talk about music or whatever. Anyway, uh, so... First things first, let's talk about the rudeness. Uh, I'm not going to tolerate anybody leaving rude messages on the, the post uh, on YouTube. Um, if you don't like something I say, that's okay. If you if I'm wrong about something, that's okay too. You can feel free to correct me. I, I mean, because I know I get things wrong sometimes. And, uh, you know, it, it happens. It's not like I'm, I'm trying to send you on a wrong path of something or anything. But anyway, I had talked about, this is my dog again, this album, um, I made a post about it, and there's a letter inside on on the uh, on the record sleeve, and I mentioned that the guy, that was the, the letter was written by the drummer, but I, it was really the bass player. So, it was a mistake, whatever. I You know, all you have to do is say, hey, it was the bass player, not the drummer. That's it. But the person left a message that was kind of rude, they, they save themselves by using other words instead of curse words, you know, spelling things differently. That's that's not going to be allowed on this, this channel, um, you know. And I didn't report them. I should have. Uh, but I just deleted it. If I see anything like that, I'm just going to delete it. End of story. Uh, and I may call you out. I'm not going to say her name. It was a her, though. Uh, she has no videos of her own. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not going to tolerate that kind of stuff. So, anyway, that's that. No, no more negative whatever. Um, so, the last couple of weeks... Um, get down, Gretchen. Uh, the last few weeks, I have been trying not to buy records, um, you know, or anything, really, because of what I did on uh, on uh, Record Store Day. I'm trying not to buy anything new uh, to save some money. So, I, I just went and I, uh, I did uh, thrift store kind of things, and... I even didn't get everything I could have gotten, you know, at the thrift stores unless it was something I thought was interesting or I uh, really needed. Um, and most of it I didn't really need. <laughs> um, so, anyway, we're going to start with the records I found, um, which was yesterday, the you know, first records I found in like three weeks. Uh, came across this. It's Asia's uh, oh, Alpha, I believe this was that name. Yes, Asia Alpha. It's their third album, I believe. I think I have the first four now. Um, uh, still has the the inner sleeve. Uh, the record, it's dirty, but it but it it looks pretty good. Uh, it needs to be cleaned, um, but the, the record itself uh, in good shape. Paid two dollars and ninety nine cents for it. Um, the only problem that I really have is that, of course, it was torn. Uh, I can't I can't tell if this is from something else that was stuck to it, or if it's actually this, I might, may try to see if it if it lifts off. Um, but you know, uh, Asia's not on my you know priority list of bands that I want to get into. You know, but I do like some of their stuff, and I think most of the stuff that I would I know was on the first couple albums, so I have all that now. Um, the next one, Bill Cosby, love him or hate him, I know he's a controversial character these days. But his comedy albums, they're just, they're fantastic. And, and you know, I know the guy may be a bad man. This is a very clean copy. It does have a seam split right there. But this is a very clean cover. That's the reason I bought it. I already had this album, but it looks way worse. Uh, this is the uh, stereo version. The, the vinyl itself is a little scuffed up. Uh, not much. Uh, it needs to be cleaned. It's much better than the one I had before, which was a mono version. Um, so, you know, Bill Cosby, whatever, uh, uh, you know, I don't approve of what he's, he was accused of doing. If he did it, he's a very bad person. Um, but I will buy his records when I see them. Um, they had a couple other ones that I already had too, but they were real beat up. Uh, the next one, uh, ELO's Time. I don't know much about ELO guys. Uh, I know they had a couple hit songs. Um, I think I might have one of their albums, uh, but it has the, you know, the inner sleeve. 
Record looks pretty good. It's got a it's got a pretty bad scuff right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, and one right here, but this one I think is going to come out um, when I when I clean it. Uh, there's a little warping to it, not much. Uh, but I don't. I'm not a big yellow fan, um, as far as I know. Um, I know a few songs here and there. Uh, I know there was one time when I was trying to learn how to play guitar. And I accidentally was playing part of one of their songs. So, you know, whatever. Uh, the other things I got, which I was not expecting to buy, but I came across these books. Uh, Mick Rock Exposed. Uh, this is uh, David Bowie on the front there. Got this for seven ninety nine um, at the Red, White, and Blue store. And it's, it's a book of, of photos of... This you know this guy's photos of musicians, uh, you know there's all kind of stuff. Whoop, that's kind of risque. Uh, you know, rock musicians. Some of them are live performance stuff like this. Uh, some of it is uh, portraits, different kind of things this guy did. And you know this is kind of what I would have liked to do in my life, but hasn't happened. I mean I've got, you know I took live performances, but it never has gone anywhere for me. Um, but, uh, you know, it's cool. The only thing I don't like, I guess, is that it doesn't tell you who the people are at the bottom of the page. Um, you know, and I'm sure he did that because, you know, he doesn't want to ruin the art of the photography, which makes sense. Um, if you go to the back, there is a smaller version of every picture saying who it is and, uh, you know, a little information about it. I think where they took the pictures and all that stuff. So it's a good book. Um, it's in very nice condition. The dust jacket is a little beat up on the corners. Look this up on eBay. It's like $90. Um, so, you know, that was a good deal. I found that. Uh, then I found this other one. Another book. Also, I think was seven ninety. It was either six ninety nine or seven ninety nine. dollars uh, The Rolling Stones. According to The Rolling Stones. Um, this book is, is fairly cheap. I mean, you can get it on eBay for like $12. Um, I, I don't know why, but it, I mean, it's it's a kind of a it's a lot of pictures and oh, I don't know if you guys are even seeing this uh, a lot of pictures and you know story I don't know what what uh, it is maybe it's the Rolling Stones telling their own story uh, you know kind of stuff I'm not sure I'm, I want to read it uh, but I haven't had a chance yet um, so that was pretty cool um, and it actually had a plastic uh, it was like in a comic book sleeve sort of, sort of thing but it was kind of funky, so I took it off. Uh, excuse me. So, the rest of everything I got is CDs. And I kind of got a lot. Um, started off, um, I think, if, so, if you guys saw the last video I made about Lily and Axe, uh, this is Songs for Eternity. That one I actually got from the, the record company um, through the mail. So, we already talked about that one. I just thought that would be included in this. Next up, came across these this one i got at the red white and blue it's paul sanchez uh saroma valley um couldn't find this one on on discogs this guy was in cowboy mouth he's a guitar player and singer um i got it for a dollar 99 i still haven't taken the tag off of it uh but it's autographed uh and so you know i think i have his autograph actually on a cowboy mouth cd cd um but it's always kind of weird when I find autographed items in the Goodwill. Because it's like, autographed items, they mean a lot to me as far as, it, once I, if I have it, I don't want to give it away. And, and I think a lot of people either, they pass away and their family doesn't know that it's autographed, or they just don't care. I don't know, one way or the other. Um, then I went to uh, the Bridge House. Um, where I do find a lot of CDs, um, and most of these probably came from there, um, now that I'm looking at the stack. Uh, but first, I got Adlita's Way, and I'm not sure, I've heard of this band, but I'm not sure if they had a hit single or anything. Um, but, this one is also autographed, I believe, by the entire band. It says to Jeanette right there, after I, I took a little while to figure it out. Uh, but it's got one, two, three, four, it's got five autographs and there's five people in the band. So I think that's everybody. Um, you know, I don't know 
if you know it's hard to read them so i don't know if i can you know if it's everybody that was in the band in the beginning or whatever i don't know and then there's fall as well uh and this one is also autographed to Jeanette. So Jeanette either gave away her CDs or her family did or somebody did. Uh, this one is autographed by either four or five people. I tried to identify the, the signatures, but I, I can only make out two of them as far as people that's in the band. And then it says right here, uh, www.myspace.com fall, uh, fall as well 2003. So... Um, these they may have toured together and she may have gotten both of their autographs at the same time i don't know but i have your cds jeanette i paid a dollar for them um so they're mine now i don't know who this band is but i'm gonna check them out there. i think they're like an alternative rock band something like that um so that's cool that so that's the autograph stuff i got so then yesterday i was at uh the uh, I believe this one was at the Red, White, and Blue. And I came across R.E.M.'s Up. And um, I've never had this album before. I don't know. I have, like, a ton of R.E.M. stuff. And I know some people don't like them, whatever. I, I love R.E.M. Um, and so I never had this album for some reason. So I picked that up. And then I came across this. This is not U2's Wide Awake in America. What happened was I was looking through the bin. And I came across this Whoop. i'm breaking it guys i came across this uh this cd i don't know if you can see it it just has rem on it but it's and it just on the back says cd uh but what it is is the single for get up uh from the green album uh it also has uh get up is the lp version then it has orange cross crush live and turn you inside out live and i i looked this up and it was hard to find on discogs i had to go through it a, a weird kind of way uh and apparently these two songs were songs that were famously bootlegged with some other stuff from from a concert uh and so for a while this was the only place that they were officially released on this this weird single and it's a promo single too so it's probably sent to radio stations or something <clears throat> um, maybe stores and in-store in play or whatever. So, uh, but then they said they released it again on one of their live albums. The one, I, I think it's on the 98 to 2000 something or whatever. The ones I've been trying to find, but I can never find it for a decent price. Um, so anyway, back to this. This was the U2 Wide Awake in America cover. And I've been looking for this out, this CD. And every time I find it, it's either some, something's wrong with it or... It's just way too much for four songs, you know. I don't want to. I can't justify it because I've seen it on vinyl and I've seen it on CD before, and I just I can't justify it for some reason for the four songs that are on it, uh, which would be "Bad Live Version," "Sort of Homecoming Live," Three Sunrises," and "Love Comes Tumbling." And I have all those songs already, so it, it's not it's not like it's something I don't already own the songs. I just don't own an official copy of the thing. So anyway, this was just sitting there. And I had this, and I was like, well, I'm going to put this in here just to hold the cover so I don't have to sit here and hold the cover. And I'll try to find this CD in the stack. And they must have had 3,000 CDs in this place. Um, and I never came across it, so I just left it in the, the thing like that. And now it's not U2's Wide Awake in America. So that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, then I came across... Uh, at, I was back at the uh, the red, white, and blue last week, and I came across the explosion. I saw this band live at Lollapalooza, not Lollapalooza, uh, Warp Tour, and I thought they were really good, but I never owned any of their their albums. Um, and so we've got the Black Tape album, which is the one I know this one got popular. I don't know what what, what was on it. But I know it got popular. And then I found another one by them. It's uh, Sick of Modern Art. And it's an EP. It's got five songs. Um, but it came with this CD. Uh, which is called Tarantulas 2003. Which is Tarantulas is the, uh, the record company. Uh, and it's got 
that's got 11 songs by different bands, including The Explosion. But then this CD was in here. It doesn't belong in here. It's another Tarantula sampler, uh, and it's called Tarantula's Attack, and it's only got six songs on it. And I can't find that on Discogs because it probably came with something, um, something else. Maybe there was another Explosion CD or, or whatever, but I can't find it. So if anybody knows what that is, you know, can identify where that came from, I would like to know so I could at least log it into my Discogs. Uh, CDs are the hardest thing to, to log in because I you can't read the, the numbers on the back of them very easily and uh, you know it, it's a mess uh, but anyway if you move on we got Reliant K uh, I really like this cover uh, apparently there's like five or six different covers for this uh, different colors I believe um, they were an alternative rock band from the 90s I believe early um, I don't know when this came out. Uh, this is a, It says it's an enhanced CD, so that's been a while. That's been since the 90s. I, I haven't seen an enhanced CD in years as far as a modern one because they don't, you know, everybody uses YouTube and everything now. Um, I had mentioned about the Muffs being confused with Tilt in one of my videos. And it was funny because the day after I made that video, I, I went to the store and I found a Tilt album. Uh, it's... Uh, viewers like you uh and so and i haven't listened to any of this stuff yet I, i've i just haven't had the time to do anything um that those are dollar 99 by the way all those ones uh this one was 2.99 it's the guns and roses greatest hits uh on cd i have this on vinyl but i never had it on cd and i just uh i wanted it because it's got a couple songs that i don't have mp3s of basically uh uh you know, so whenever I get around to burning this to my computer, I have a copy of, of you know, uh, I believe it was Sympathy for the Devil and uh, Ain't It Fun, maybe? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I think there was one or two songs. I know Sympathy for the Devil was one of them and one of the other ones, I believe. Um, then I got another Avenged Sevenfold CD for two ninety nine for some reason. That one's called Nightmare. Kind of cool cover. I know people love or hate them as well. And then I found uh, Alanis Morissette, uh, let's cover this lady's name, uh, her MTV Unplugged, it's, uh, this was somebody named Donna Hanks CD, she left the thing uh, on it, um, kind of cool looking CD, uh, it's got most of the songs from Jagged Little Pill, I believe, on it, like You Learn, uh, Head Over Feet, uh, You Oughta Know, I think that's the only three I know from that album, but I don't. I don't have a lot of her stuff. I think I got two albums and then this. Uh, I saw Jagged Little Pill at Walmart yesterday. I thought about buying it and I just didn't. I, I think it was. I think it was too much, and I just don't have the money right now to buy new new records and stuff. Um, so I passed on it. Then we've got Paul Westerberg Stereo. Um, now Paul Westerberg. I'm sorry, my dog just knocked over a bunch of stuff. What a professional video, right? Uh, Paul Westerberg, I know him from the single soundtrack. He had that Sick of Myself song and... Was it Sick of Myself? No, Dyslexic Heart. And uh, Sick of Myself was Matthew Sweet. Uh, and something else on there. And then he was on the soundtrack for another movie. Uh, that, it was a cartoon or something. Um, but I can't remember. But anyway, I've never had anything by him. So this has two CDs. Uh... It's got the one right there, and then this kind of other one. And the thing is, it says, if you look at the back cover, it's got a track listing, and it's it's only one of the CDs, and it doesn't list all the songs. Uh, I looked that up on, on Discogs, and like, uh, it's either this one or this track listing, one or the other. It's missing like two songs. But they're on there. They just they're not listed for some reason. Um, so it's two different. It, it's maybe one album. I don't know. I don't know the history of this. But it's it's two different CDs. Um, it's not because one of them says stereo. One of them says mono. Not that they're one is recorded in mono. I, I don't know if it is or not. But it's two different ver like it's not two different versions of the same thing. It's two different. You know, it's two CDs worth of, of music. So so I'll check that out. It'll probably be pretty good. Um, don't know when that came out, um, 
but uh, it, this it even says right there, recorded in stereo. This is a little sticker somebody stuck on there. Um, so I don't know. Uh, then we've got one that, that has eluded me for a long time. I've never seen it anywhere. Um, but I've had these two songs by this that I by this group uh, that I got on a, a sampler or something at one time. Uh, and it's G Love and Spencer Sauce. Uh, and uh, this is a self-titled album. This might, I don't know if this is their debut, but it's uh, it's an old one from the 90s, uh, 94. Um, I, I have an, one or two other G-Love albums, um, but this is the one I wanted because it has blues music and uh, cold beverage. And both of those songs were on some kind of sampler thing I think I had or something. I don't know, but I've had them, I had them for years. I could never find this CD, and it's not that I I didn't go, you know, I could have went on eBay or Amazon or something and got it, but I don't, I, I'd don't. i rather find stuff out in the wild, you know, I, it, I'm weird about that kind of stuff. If I'm going to go on eBay and something, or Amazon, I'm going to get something that is something I don't know what it is. Like, I've got two things coming, uh, hopefully next week or so, uh, two records I bought, I think one of them was five dollars and one of them was seven dollars brand new bands i've never heard of uh but it looked interesting to me so i figured i'd try it um and i do that a lot question get down uh then came across blues traveler uh bridge uh i had the first four blues travelers albums and i thought they only did one more and apparently they've done like eight more or something. Um, and this is like the sixth album. So, um, you know, because I, I remember uh, John Popper, the singer, had some health problems for a while. And I, I know he lost a ton of weight, which I could stand to do myself. Uh, and so I thought they, that he gave up doing music, but apparently they didn't. Um, and so uh, this, this ought to be good. Um, you know, uh, I heard that song... Uh, Run around, I believe it was, or something. Uh, uh, I heard that on the radio the other day when I when I got this, and I was like, huh, "That's kind of funny." You pick up something out of the you know thrift store, and you hear hear songs by them immediately. <clears throat> then I got Three Days Grace, Life Starts Now. Um, I had a couple of their early albums. Um, this is kind of cool looking. Um, it's got it's got one CD, but it's it's in there, and the booklets in there as well. Uh, I liked them when they first came out, got the first two, maybe three albums, and then I just kind of lost track of them as well, and uh, I don't know what album this is, like uh, how far down on their list of albums that they have, um, but it's definitely after the third one. Uh, this came out in 2009, so <coughs> maybe, maybe they have about five or six albums now, I don't know, maybe more. Uh, next one, Wolf Mother. I've never heard of this band no i'm sorry i've never heard this band i have heard of them and so i saw that and, and it's, it was brand new like it's never i don't know if it's been played before uh but uh i like the cover i thought the art was nice on it um it's a scantily clad woman you know <laughs> but uh not that's not why i like the art i just like the like i just like the art uh and so that ought to be something i think they're like uh uh, maybe not a stoner rock, maybe kind of thing. I don't know. And then, la not lastly, but second to last, found this Dropbox, and I knew I I knew knew this band for some reason. Couldn't remember if I own this or not. Um, so I, I bought it. It was ninety nine cents or dollar, one of those. Um, and I couldn't remember like if I just something about them said you know you know what this is. But I didn't know if I had it. Well, I do have it. Um, but I don't have this version. Because this version is the uh, BMG Music uh, Club version. And it contains a song, Touche. Well, the original version that I have does not have that. Um, and so I thought that was, all right, well, at least I got a you know an extra special you know version. Because it's got a different song or whatever. Then I find out that that song is a song that was released on the Godsmack uh, acoustic album, which is probably sitting right next to me. Um, 
Uh, sorry guys, I do this every time. I say I'm not going to, but I do it. Uh, God smack. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm right in your face. This album, the other side album. Uh, it's, uh, and it's on here. Uh, and it's it's a, the same version. This, I haven't listened to them yet, but it's the same song that's on this because the I guess the singer of this and the singer of Godsmack sing it together, um, a duet or whatever. And I was like, oh well, now I mean I only wasted a dollar, but I, I didn't need it because I already had the song. So uh, anyway, so I got two versions of that now. And the last thing, um, because I don't have a lot of Beatles CDs, um, I have Beatles records, um, and I don't have a ton of those either, really. I mean, I, I've got the ones that um, I think are my favorites anyway. Um, but I bought Beatles A Hard Day's Night for $1.99. Um, <coughs> and, uh, it's, you know, it, it was pretty brand new, too. Um, so, uh, anyway... Uh, so that was all that I've gotten. A lot of stuff. Um, a lot of different kind of things. Um, I wouldn't say anything that's like super amazing, but these autograph ones are uh, are kind of kind of cool to have, even though they weren't autographed to me. Uh, I, I don't know why. Again, people would uh, turn that into goodwill in thrift stores, but it happens. Um, so, if you're looking for, you know, CDs or records, get out there and look in the thrift stores. Because people, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can't find anything, you can't find anything. You can find a lot of stuff. Um, you know, some of it's going to be odd, you know, stuff that you may not really want. Uh, you know, as far as like, oh, I really got to have this. But it might be stuff that, like, you knew from the 90s or, you know, 80s or even, you know further back you know i uh, guess and you were like oh i remember that but i never got it well it gives you a chance to get it for cheap you know um they uh they have a lot of stuff out there you know and and you can't always buy it you know and and so if you're like me you like to have a lot of things for some reason um and you know i, I don't get a chance to listen to a lot of this stuff you know but maybe one or two times and then it, it just kind of gets put away which a lot of people would think, oh, well, that's ridiculous, but it's always there if I want it. <coughs> that's what I what I kind of like, I guess, is that even if I can't spend, you know, a lot of time with something, if I want to, it's there. That's that's my whole collecting thing. It's like, you know, maybe that's the hoarding mentality. I don't know. Um, but as far as music goes, it there's so many ways to, to listen to it that... You know, like you can take it with you in your car if you have a CD player, or you can make MP3s of it and put it on your phone or iPod or whatever kind of player you have, something like that. And you know, you can get to it when you get to it. Um, so, but if you don't have it, what can you do? So, I mean, you can see here I have a lot of CDs. I mean, I've seen people with tons more, but I've got at least 2,000 CDs. I don't know how many of these, these things hold, but there's three cases like this these wooden things uh one two each has three sections well let's do it like this one two three sections to to them and then they're one two three four five six seven eight nine looks like they're nine deep or tall and three across I just knock something off of there so and you can get one two So probably get about 30 CDs in each slot. So you do the math. I mean, it's three cross, nine deep, times three. Whatever all that equals, plus overflow stuff that's not on here. Because, uh, like, if you could see, you can't really see up here, but there's st stuff sl put in the, up, the top shelf. The space between here and here can hold maybe six or eight high cds so those are all getting full filled up too at the top because i have nowhere else to put them so i, I don't know what i'm going to do 
um, besides not buy more CDs. You know, if, if life would ever change the way I need it to and uh, get me into a good job, uh, I could uh, maybe do some shelf remodeling type thing where I get better shelves or more shelves or whatever. Um, but, you know, who knows? That's the future. Um, but anyway, that's all for this episode. It's kind of been a long one. Uh, and really not a whole lot to talk about, except use stuff, but uh, uh, don't leave nasty messages. That's, I guess if you get anything out of this video, do not leave that kind of stuff on my YouTube page. You know, I don't care who you are or, or what. If you want to disagree with something I say, that's fine. If you want to correct something I say, that's fine too and, and actually important in case I say something wrong. But don't be rude about it. Don't curse me out or use words that you're you're pretending not to curse, but you actually are. Whatever. We're not doing that here. So um, just uh, be respectful and you know you don't you be kind. I guess is the word. You know don't don't sit behind your computer and try to you know be something that uh, you wouldn't be to my face. Uh, so anyway, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that and all this uh, episode, and that's it.